Hello everyone. I welcome you all in this video lecture. In this video lecture, we will study about uh, different factors which affect the location and spacing of the substation. In feeder and distribution system of track electrification, we know that substation is a very important component. The location of substation and the spacing between the substations highly affect the performance of the track electrification. Now let us discuss certain factors which affect the location and spacing between the substation. System voltage, availability of extra high tension lines, availability of land, track conductor losses, maximum permissible voltage drop, overload trip setting of circuit breaker. Now let us discuss each factors in more detail. We start with the system voltage. Higher the system voltage, then the maximum permissible voltage drop that is a certain percentage of the system voltage. So maximum permissible voltage drop will be higher and higher distance between the substations can be selected. Overall cost of electrification decrease. Availability of extra high tension lines. If extra high tension line is passing along the route of the track, then it reduces the bus bar regulation and voltage fluctuation. So higher distance between substation can be selected. Availability of land. Large area of land at a cheaper rate near the track is always required to establish substation feeding cost and other arrangement. So this decides the location of substation. This factor of availability at cheaper rate that is very important factor to decide the location along the track for the substation. Track conductor losses. Higher the spacing between the substation, I square R losses will be higher. But at the same time, if we increase the distance between two substations, then it will be economic in cost of AC as well as DC switch gears. So how to select based on these two factors? So we have an option when a ratio of sum of fixed charges that is the interest depreciation and maintenance to overhead expenses due to energy loss in conductor when this ratio is a unity, then that is most economic spacing between the substation. Maximum permissible voltage drop. Voltage drop occurs in the track and the return conductor. And that depends upon cross section of the conductor and also on rail and its bonding method. This factor also influences the spacing between the substation. Overload trip setting of the circuit breaker. If the spacing between the substation is more, the resistance of the circuit during the event of fault at the far end will be more, which in turn reduce the value of fault current and that will not be able to trip the circuit breaker. We have some preset value of fault current in circuit breaker, but due to this condition as we discussed, the effective fault current 
is less and that is why it will not trip the circuit breaker this is one type of malfunction in the performance of circuit breaker to avoid this type of malfunction of circuit breaker spacing between two substations should be adjusted accordingly now capacity of substation again we have certain factors based on which we can decide the capacity of the substation the capacity of substation mainly depends upon load and type of supply that is a whether ac supply or dc supply average weight of train length of average run scheduled speed characteristic of traction motor train service that is frequency of run length of the section fed by substation nature of track route that is uh, whether gradient or curvature to be considered so these are the factors which affect while deciding the capacity of the substation and now we will see the classification of substation single unit or multi unit type indoor or outdoor type attended or unattended type manually or remote controlled operated let us see single unit type in single unit type substation only one set of equipment is used generally it is used for single track and low traffic density area it requires smaller spacing less current better voltage regulation and less losses but the maintenance cost of lv and hv switch gear is very high on the contrary multi unit type substation we use a multiple set of equipment with higher capacities and that reduce the capital cost but in case of failure large area is affected indoor or outdoor type mostly we use indoor type of substation in which proper insulation sufficient spacing between equipment specially designed building with all safety measures are used so the cost of indoor substation is a high we use a highly expensive equipment on the other side outdoor type substation and require less attendance attended or unattended and at the same time manually and remote controlled attended type substation at normally manually operated for 24 hours in charge supervisors are required operators are required while unattended type are normally automatically and remote operated so these are some of the classification of substation we use uh, during track electrification thank you for watching my video keep watching thank you very much